Welcome to another episode of the Property Management Show brought to you by 4 and Half Marketing Agency for Property Managers. For today's podcast, we're interviewing Terry Alcala, a property management company owner, and Paul Foudier, a realtor. They have a really awesome relationship that they've established and built over the years that allows them to share business. They also work with other people within their network to pass referrals back and forth and really just expand their business together. So if you wanna know how they continue building their networks and keep those referrals coming, stay tuned. Thanks you both for joining us. I know um, during COVID, you guys came together and you're standing six feet apart. For Five safety. and a half. Uh, yes, sir. But thank you, for, thank you for doing that for us. Um, we're here, obviously, to talk about the relationship that you guys have had for quite some time, um, referring business and like just diving into how that relationship was built, sustained, and how other people can kind of look to you guys for guidance on how to create relationships like that as well. Because we have, obviously, we, um, Marie and I work for Four and a Half, um, marketing agency for property managers. And we have a lot of clients that ask us about realtor referrals or referral relationships, maybe with vendors, um, and how to model those. And obviously, um, we're not the experts. So it's really great to have you guys here pick your brain a little bit. Um, And per usual, before we dive into that, I would like, if you guys don't mind, um, to just take turns and give us a little bit of information about who you are, what you do, what your background is, and then we can dive right in um, to the topic. Perfect. Go ahead. Great, Terry. (laughs) You start. Oh, I start. Okay, great. I'll start. (laughs) Wonderful. Thank you. Well, so uh, my name is Paul Boudier. I'm a realtor here in Northern California and serves the greater Sacramento and Placer County area. Uh, I'm a native over 50 years of Sacramento and I've uh, been in, in real, a realtor uh, for over 25 years. And uh, with that, uh, we've had the opportunity to help thousands of families in the uh, Tri-County area uh, with regards to helping them find a home or even investment property. And uh, that's how Terry and I met. So uh, we'll, we'll talk some more about that as well. And I'm Terry Alcala. I um, own Action Properties here in Roseville. And I have been doing property management now for approximately 30 years. Uh, Action Properties has been in business just about 20. And I have been lucky to know Paul most of that time. So it's been uh, quite uh, exciting uh, and beneficial for both of us. Absolutely. I love how you popped on and off screen (laughs) for that, Terry. Yeah. It was very. You do, man. <laughs> there was a suspense in there. Where's that hook? Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, to to get our um, our big question ready. So, how did you two meet, and how did this relationship relationship start? Well, I have to thank my mother for this, unfortunately. <laughs> my mother is also a, has been a real estate agent for many, many years. And she and Paul worked in a, what was the first office? Coker Ewing. Coker Ewing. Uh, back in what? 94. 94. I was there in 94. She was there before I was, for yes. sure. Yes. yes. My mom is much older. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. He's... <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul was a new agent at that time I think, when he first started. And uh, of course, my mom uh, fell in love with his worth worth ethics and, you know, how he presented himself. And over the years, we've stayed in touch. Uh, I'm one of the few property management companies that don't do sales within my office. So, of course, I partner up with people who can give my clients um, the best information. Thanks, Anything to add to that? <laughs> no, that's 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 it. I mean, your your mom made made the connection, and then we had yeah. the opportunity to. You know, I had an investor that uh, ended up purchasing a property and uh, looking for a great property management uh, person that I could refer them to that would do a great job. And so then, uh, knowing that uh, Claire's daughter uh, Terry, you know, had the actual property here in Roseville, we just made the connection. And then uh, with that, uh, my my clients are raving fans of Terry's, so they they do uh, Terry and Terry's team does a phenomenal job. And so by, she makes it easy to refer clients to her. 
and people become raving fans. And when she makes me look like a rock star, then people know like I know the right people to to refer them to. And so I gain their trust by being able to refer strong people like Terry and her team. That's awesome. That's so like step one is, is you, like, I, I would say that obviously since you guys were connected through Terry's mom, like use your network, I think is, is like step one, use your network to look exactly. for somebody within it that you can work with um, and build relationships and maybe even have a connection between, cause it's probably difficult to go to some rando realtor or rando property manager and be like let's have a business relationship um do you guys do you guys work with other other realtor other property managers like do you commingle that or do you um is it exclusively exclusively yeah exclusively i'm not good with words all the time but <laughs> exclusively work together on my end, um, I am fortunate enough, again, not to do sales, and that brings me many real estate agents, um, old and new. Um, so we work with uh, Lions and HomeSmart and uh, Remax. Um, I even manage properties for the realtors themselves. Uh, and so typically when someone comes to me, I... I do refer them Paul first off because I feel that he is uh, very educated in the sales portion of it and can give great advice when they're interested in, you know, what the market's doing, that type of thing. And you? Yeah, wonderful. And so uh, Terry, you know, specializes in, in Roseville and parts of Sacramento. I'll have clients that will be in outlying areas. And so they'll look for you know, a property manager in those areas or you know, even some of our clients that work with other property managers and have an opportunity to build relationships there as well. Because yeah. well. the nice thing is once you know what Terry expects, I can duplicate that in another relationship. It's going to create, create an opportunity to, to be able to lead generate and, and, and build a business that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm curious to know, do you have like anything written down to like formalize a relationship? Was it just a handshake type of, you know, formalization? Pinky um, promise. Yeah. Well, for me, yeah. I, again, because my parents were in real estate and um, I still feel I do a lot old school, a handshake type of thing and trust. Uh, of course, if it was a a new agent that I am getting referred to or referring back, I guess in the, in these days, you know, I still trust in people and they're going to do what they say. So I, I, there's not a formal contract or anything. We just have an understanding. And, and I've worked it's, with, it's, yeah. yeah. And, and so, yeah. And, and so with our, uh, with our relationship it, 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 and being able to communicate often uh, and, and from a standpoint where we're able to, use the, the, the client's experience as, as a way to be able to know that, hey, things are going really well, um, then, then it's just another way to help uh, verify, uh, you know, how we're communicating and what the client's experience is. Um, I've worked with other property managers that they, you know, they say, you know, give us a referral and then when that person comes back through, like if they're in Elk Grove, they'll say, well, when that person comes back through, then we'll keep it in our system so that way when they go to sell, then we'll call you. Right, yeah. and that's a that's a good a good system to have with regards to working with all, all realtors. Yeah, I do the same. You know, the name gets tied to the agent, and when it comes back around, I'm going to give it back to that particular agent that gave it to me. You know, it's interesting. I feel like um, so you obviously don't do Terry. You Terry, there are two of you. Terry, <laughs> you you obviously don't do real estate um, buying selling. Um, we established that. I have spoken with a lot of property managers that have referral programs where they, they do real estate, but like you said, they'll keep it in their system. And if a different real estate agent refers them business, um, they'll manage it for the time that it's managed. And then when they go to sell or what have you, they call that real real estate agent back and, and pass the sale back to them. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, for you, Paul, what do you have any relationships like that with with property managers that also do real estate? Um, and it, do you think that that would be a little bit scary, or is it kind of like going back to the trust thing? And it usually happens. Well, not at all. I mean, it really has to do with with the, with the business model, right? Yeah. And and so I'll give you a great example. Uh, had a referral from a a, a, a client 
uh, for their, her sister wanted to sell a property in Rancho Cordova. So they had a property management company out in Natomas. So I talked with the property manager uh, that was representing that property and it came to found out that the, the broker for the office, it was involved in the real estate transactions and they don't like doing that because that it, it, it's, it, 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 it's so, it moves in such a different direction that the broker says, hey, I want to be a broker of the office and we, want, we do property management. So we do, we, we sell properties because our clients asked us to do that. Although if we had a great solution, then we would go to that solution. So for anybody to be in a, uh, in, in a role where they have a client that has that need, and instead of letting the client just go out there and experience something that they don't know what the outcome would be, mm-hmm. to have a property manager that goes out and interviews realtors and say, okay, here's 10 questions, right, that you would end up asking a realtor to be able to find out if they can be part of your referral network. Um, and whether that's a luxury property or whether that's a multi-unit property yeah. or whether it's a retail space, right? And then being able to know that you could count on that person for that. So if each property manager had a list of 10 questions and then they made it a, uh, uh, a point every week to, to have five conversations with five different realtors that were experienced in the area, they had the bandwidth to provide that level of customer service, then they could grow their platform and their business so that way they could create leverage and then end up doing, you know, providing better service and be able to build out their business at a higher level too. Yeah, that's really good. Because you want, you want those relationships. You want to be able to say, hey, you want to buy an investment property? I'll help you buy it. Don't worry. I have somebody that can take care of you, much like Terry well, like, for you. So, so great, great example. Just an experience that we're involved with right now. Um, so one of Terry's clients wanted to sell her property and and oh, by the way, received a phone call from an agent that just called the owner, called Shirley, and said, yeah, I can sell your property for you. And the agent said, yeah, we can sell it for five, for 450, uh, 550. 550. Yeah, 550, we can sell it for 550. And so, and we, the tenant's gonna buy the property, right? And so I called and talked with Shirley and she wants to do a 1031 exchange. And so the agent didn't know anything about 1031 exchanges and gave her some information that was not, that was incorrect. And so then I called and talked with her and she says, yeah, I want to work with you, Paul. So I called the other agent, just let them know that because there was no listing agreement. There was no agency. It was an interview process that she was still going through. She hasn't settled on an agent. If she had, then I would have backed out because there had already been that, they ate that fiduciary. At the end of the day, though, we ended up selling the property to the tenant. Uh, we just had the appraisal come back. It came back at 583, right? So $33,000 higher than what he was going to list it for. That would have started the conversation with the tenant. And so the... Owner's gonna, I mean, the owner loves Terry. (laughs) So I think Terry wants the owner because we did a great job. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And what happened there too, when the agent was interviewing, um, the owner had asked me about um, 1031 exchanges. And of course, you know, not knowing, I I know a little bit about it, but not feeling comfortable to quote or all that. I said, well, let me call Paul and you can ask him all the questions you want. Um, That's kind of what I like about Paul is that, He'll talk to anyone and and give him as much information. He's into education, you know, education for my tenants, education for my owners, those types of things, which does make me look good because, you know, hey, I can't answer your questions 100%, but let me connect you with someone who can and make you more comfortable in making that decision. And that's just such a really, personally, and I know Marie can agree with me, Um, that's just, that's such a great way to do business. I hear people so often say, oh, I don't, I don't want to give away free information because then they're going to go somewhere else or they're going to do it themselves themselves. or X, Y, and Z. And it's like, Hey, if that person does that, that's, that's okay. One, they're probably going to do it wrong, but (laughs) that that's okay. Because what you did is you built trust and you're building trust with these people that if they don't use you in that moment, they're going to come back to you in the future because they remember that you helped them, you know, without any benefit on your end other than just like maybe a good conversation. So I, I love that. Um, and that always makes me happy when I, when yeah. I hear that people are doing that. I mean, we do the same thing with like content. It's, it's, it's like content marketing, but it's almost like relationship marketing. It is. And, you know, uh, for me, networking I, is. I establish uh, with my clients a lot of personal relationship. I mean, I've known many of my clients have known me before my children are even born and I still manage their properties. And, you know, they send me birthday cards for them and, and things like that. So it's important that you can educate them, you know, so they're making the, the best decision that they can. Mm-hmm. 
That's amazing. I, I love the success stories that you both have shared with us. And so not to be like a Debbie Downer, but as we all know, <laughs> life is not just all rainbows and oh, butterflies, no. right? Are you sure? Um, Marie? And so it's <laughs> well, if, if yeah. he, that's your life, I envy you. I'm curious to know if throughout your relationship, referral relationship, you've encountered any um, instances where it was challenging or things didn't really pan out the way um, you both you know, had in mind and kind of like, how did you handle it as like a, a referral team or like, you know, um, as business um, kind of like partners in, in a sense? And how did you weather through that? Well, I am fortunate that I can say that everything that I've given to Paul and he's referred to me um, has not had any um, bad luck or bad experiences. I have had an experience just fairly recently where a client, uh, an agent referred me a client and through the process, uh, at the end, uh, it was time to close, the escrow closed, and I went and did the inspection for the property owner. Well, to me, um, the property was not in what I would say rentable condition. It needed a full paint, it needed cleaning, carpet cleaning, you know. They were going to have to spend probably about six or $7,000 just to oh ready for rental. And... Um, I made the comment to the owner, you know, maybe you should talk to your realtor because I'm not sure how your contract went, you know, what you negotiated, but this is no way in move in condition. Um, the realtor, on the other hand, kind of took it negatively and told me that I needed to basically mind my own business. She didn't know what her relationship with the client was. So I apologized, but ultimately, again, I was just educating the client on the rental needs. Uh, right. No way was I saying, you know, anything about the contract or how the inspections went. And, but I tried to mend that fence, but it didn't go very well. But the client was very happy and is still very happy today. You were just presenting facts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Is that a bummer? I mean, human nature, people can get defensive. Yeah, and for me, I mean, when you're getting ready to place a client spending thousands of dollars to ready it, when the seller left it, should have been pretty close to a, a ready position. Right, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think um, a key piece that I'm picking up is that, um, like you were sharing, Terry, right? A client of yours was asking about 1031 exchanges, and although you know a little bit, you were um, conscious of the fact that knowing a little bit wouldn't cut it. And so you were like, let me reach out for help. So in the instance that you had described where, you know, a realtor maybe knew a little bit about what it takes to, you know, get a home rent ready, but not a lot, instead of being like, hey, I know a little bit, but like not a lot, let me reach out to another resource. Instead, he, she, maybe was like, oh, I think a little is enough. And then in the end, that actually would have har harmed, right? The owner, if you didn't step in and was like, hey, actually, like, we can't rent it out like this. You're just going to you ruin your reputation, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I, I come across that in my business is, you know, real estate agents are real estate agents. They know exactly what they need to do in order to make a sale. But a property management it's a little different beast. And I, my, my suggestion is for realtors, if they want to give advice, that they should contact a property manager and, and pick their brain and figure out what is needed to be in the best interest of the client. And, and when you don't deal in rentals every day, so from a standpoint, so the, what's the definition of a professional? So the definition of a professional is knowing what they know, knowing what they don't know, and know where they have to go to get the answer, right? So for all my answers, I go to Terry. And for all mine, I go to Paul or he directs me, um, like he has a special person that helps him with his 1031 exchanges. And I actually had got to meet him at a class that we went to. Bill, Bill Ingo. Yeah, Bill Ingo. Yes. And um, I have a lot of clients, you know, doing 1031 exchanges right now. And so Paul had given me 
his contact information. And what led to that whole thing was, is I called Paul and said, Hey, you introduced me to this gentleman. I can't remember his name. I can't find his card, but I need information from my client. And, you know, again, it's finding that resource. Um, if Paul can't help you or your agent can't help you, they should be able to direct you to somebody else that can assist you in what you need. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm curious to know, obviously, Terry and Paul, both of you work with other like team members in your you know, respective companies, especially you, Terry. So um, we've heard a lot about how you yourself, you're referring business to Paul and you have other referral relationships, but how does your team play into this like referral culture um, for lack of a better term? Well, they, they do the same. Um, basically in my office, um, you know, it's, it's my decision and how it tears down. And unfortunately they're like ducks or geese or kind of just follow and do what I'm supposed to do. But typically they will take a call and they'll say, hey, you know, we have, do have a couple agents that we work with. I'll give you, you know, two or three names. My suggestion is you call them and see how you interact with them and see if you mesh. I mean, that's the key ingredient. And I think in dealing with client is you have to be able to have um, agreeable personalities yeah, connection. and connection. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't like the agent that is like the full hardcore press, like a car salesman. Yeah. You know, I want them to be more personable and, you know, ask how your day is and, and have the ten tenant or the owner's best interest. And mm -hmm. so I just connect myself with, you know, agents that do that. A good way to do and things. And it's all about a fit, right? And so, yeah. 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 Definitely. I do the same thing when clients call my office for um, looking for a property manager. I tell them, you know, you need to call at least two or three. My biggest suggestion is you contact someone that's close to your property. But once you carry on a conversation with that a property manager or that company that you're going to go with, you're going to know if you feel comfortable or not. Yeah. yeah what do you say ab about the companies that are trying to really like, automate everything. Um, I, I know we see it on the property management side. I don't know how much we see it on the real estate side, but like what, what are your thoughts there? Do you think that that's filtering out the people you don't want to work with because the people you do aren't going to like that style? No, I do both. So I have very automated clients and I have others that, you know, don't own a computer. So they come into the office and talk to you. Um, again, I tailor my needs to whatever that owner needs. However, the biggest compliment our office gets is that we typically have someone that answers the phone every call that comes in. They're not having to go through a directory or, you know, funnel through 10 people to get to one. Yeah. That's yeah. That one, that personal contact. I think that's what most of these companies are missing is that personal contact. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, it does take a lot of time and effort and training, right? When you're bringing in new people, like they, they can't just be personable. They actually have to know how to answer the phone, especially with fair housing issues and whatnot, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it is, I guess, like, like you said, Terry, right? It's a fit. So there may be owners out there who want everything automated on their cell phone and you know, but if that's kind of like not your niche, then you just accept that, right? Yeah. So, that's I mean, great. I have owners that are overseas that haven't seen their houses in 20 years. I mean, we re-roof them, repaint them, we, you know, videotape it and send it to them and they make their decisions. And I have other owners that are here and they actually want to go to the property and make those decisions. So, again, that's just having a variety with your clients and being able to adapt to what they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it seems to me like you're taking that into account whenever you're referring them to people like Paul, right? Like you want to make sure they mesh together. Most definitely. I think that um, it's our human nature uh, to be kind to one another and, you know, be respectful. Uh, if you're getting someone that is very abrupt or, you know, just cut you off all the time and not listening that's not kind of the right fit for me. And I could say probably 90% of my clients, yeah. they want someone who's going to listen and, and do what's best for them. 
I was listening just then, if you couldn't tell. Yeah. I was like, oh, oops, no. You can't. Can't. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to listen because that's what Terry wants. No. Um, yeah. And then that, and that, that just makes a lot of sense. It's, it's something I'm getting from this is yes, obviously this topic is about, is about like your guys' relationship and how to strengthen a PM realtor relationship, but it's not just the relationship you have with each other that helps strengthen it. It's the relationships you have with other people that allow you guys to be successful. Um, so outside of clients that you work with, are there any, any other, um, I know you mentioned, um, Bill, 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 someone, Bill Engel. I, I don't Bill, Bill Engel. Engel, Engel. Engel. Um, so I, I know you mentioned him. Are there any other like vendor type or maybe even not vendor, but just other um, networking relationships that kind of help strengthen your, um, your like transactions with each other <laughs> holistically, I guess, if I'm even making sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. No, you bring, you bring up a great, a great point because when, you know, certainly when, in, in my business, when people think about real estate, they can think about myself or our team then mission accomplished um, and when they're thinking about real estate. Although if we can get them to think that when they have their gutters that, are, that they need to be cleaned and then they think about Paul, then that's even bigger, right? Because they're not even thinking about real estate and they're thinking about us and how we're, how we're a solution. So by being able to have that mindset, like Terry being able, being able to earn the respect through the experience, right? And they say, oh, I've got my rental house. Oh, I'm going to sell my house or I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get some painting done. I'm going to call Terry because she probably has a list of vendors, right? That, that I can reach out to. She probably knows who a good plumber is. Not somebody that's going to come out and do something that's not going to be required. She already knows who a good electrician is. She already knows if I need to get my carpets clean or my roof done or anything, right? Anything has to do with the house. Terry's got all the contacts. Yeah. So yeah. that there, there is such a big opportunity there. Now, when you take that a step further and then you, commute, then you, you, you look at, who is it that really checked to this year, right? So in, in our business, you know, it would end up being a, um, uh, 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 say, a contractor. So we, we refer a contractor on, on 12 different transactions, and on those 12 different transactions, he, he, he grossed out $80,000. Well, so we are a wealth determiner for that contractor. So to go to that contractor and then be able to say, hey, Joey, uh, you know, th thanks so much for doing a great job for our clients. So we hope that you are in marketing also, and you will go earn that opportunity when people th have a question about what we need a good realtor, that you refer them to us. So we're expecting then for you to return to us two referrals in a year. So can you do that? Oh, yeah, I can do that, Paul. And then we'll continue to refer him business. He does a great job. And then we're able to grow our business too. So there is a conversation though. It's And I, I, I love that. I love that where it's, it's, um, are, are you doing that with, with everyone where you say, give them a certain number and it's like that reciprocal thing, like, Hey, here's what our expectations are like, not or else, but will you go to somebody else? And will you say, Hey, this isn't working out. We're going to, going to find somebody else to, to have this relationship with. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's a, it's a conversation that, that happens. So yeah. it's the same conversation. We have something called the promise. So the, the promise when we meet with the client, so Brittany would say, Brittany, we are so happy that you've chosen the Paul Boudier team to help you find your right home. And, and, and our expectation is that we're going to do such a great job for you that you're going to become a raving fan. So can I tell you what a raving fan means to us? Yes. So can I tell you what a raving yes. fan means yes. to yes. us? Yes, yes, yes. Tell me, tell me. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So this is what a raving fan is for us, that, that through that experience that you're going to have your real estate radar up. And you're going to know people that are thinking about real estate. Why? Because you're thinking about real estate. And when you find those people that you, if you love them, if they're friends or family, they're nice folks and you want to refer them to someone, would you please give me a call with their name and number so I can call them? Now, when we know when you call with two people while we're in a transaction, whether we're selling your home or buying a home, and you've called us with two people's names, the, the referrals, then we know we've done a great job. And if, I, if we don't get those two referrals when we come to closing, then I'm going to simply ask you, what could we have done differently? So that way, when you were thinking about real estate, you have thought about us and give us a chance to be able to talk with them so they can have the same amazing experience that you have. That's great. And mine on the property management side is kind of the same thing. You know, if I'm doing an excellent job um, for an owner or even a tenant, actually, I just had a tenant a client come in and said, hey, I, this person I work for with, um, they rented from you two and a half years ago and we were talking about listing our house and putting it up for rental and I was kind of nervous. 
she said, oh, you know, you got to call Terry. Um, she's the owner of Action Properties. She'll give you all the information you need and, you know, see if it's work workable for you. So it was kind of nice. Uh, two and a half years later, a tenant actually referred, you know, a coworker because they had a good experience. Yeah. All of it. All of it. All of it <laughs> together. Just like, it's just like the avatar tree or whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> the avatar tree. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? I forget. The tree of life. The, the tree of life. The tree of life. Is that what it's called? They yeah. have the little thingies. Anyways, how much time, if like, do you set aside specific time to, to work on, I don't know why I do quotes, to work on your relationships? Like, do you say, hey, um, you know, once a quarter, once a month, I need to spend five hours building new relationships or strengthening relationships that I already have. Um, is there anything like that or any recommendations you have for like nice things you can do to strengthen relationships? Go ahead. Well, no, I can get that. No. <laughs> yeah. So, so my, my, it, every business owner is in the lead generation business. Right, so it's whatever product or service they have, and then they're in the lead generation business. So every day, we're we're making contacts with people we know and people we don't know, right? Because there's two types of people out there. There's people we know, and then there's people we don't know. And so we contact those, those people every day. So my goal is to make 20, 20 new contacts every day. Wow, wow. So what about you, Terry? <laughs> or what, sorry, Paul, what was that? So Terry, so, so Terry said because we one of the things we do in the morning. We to uh, with our team, we'll, we'll meet together in the morning, uh, either via Zoom or together, but it used to be before together. So I'm in an office with 250 agents and I have five agents that are on my team. So we meet in the morning and we do a morning huddle. And the morning huddle is, what, what was your, what'd you do yesterday, right? What's your focus for today? And then what's your affirmation for today? And then we'll go around and do the affirmation. So I shared that with Terry. So we came in, uh, in Terry's office, met everybody in the morning and we went through that, right? So, so affirmations, your mindset is really important just to get you on task for the day. Absolutely. I love that. And for me, um, basically, I have a low goal. Um, no. <laughs> mine is either, you know, one to two, you know, contacts a day. Um, but often it's more. I mean, I'm talking to my painter and the painter knows somebody. And, you know, so some days it can be, you know, five, six, seven. And other days it might not be any. But for me, you know, I try to get at least 15 to 20 a month, um, not a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but that is really good advice. Even, even if you're not doing it consciously every day, it averages out over the course of a month and you could probably attribute one to every day. So really the answer is it shouldn't be, oh, once every 90 days, we're going to do this. It should be something that you're looking to do all of the time. Yeah, and so for me, that's kind of why we asked Paul to come in because I know he's very successful in his office and his group and getting them all connected and, and on the same page. And here, uh, we're constantly, you know, we're going all different directions. So I wanted to bring that unity of, um, you know, meeting together and talking about, you know, how to start your day and what transpired and then what you could do better today that you maybe didn't do so well the day before. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just, the positive, the positivity is a really good thing to, to bring to the table because days can start off rough too. You, you, if you don't get enough sleep, if you don't get enough food, if you, you know, had a bad phone call early in the morning or you're putting out a problem super early. So I really love the idea of getting together and kind of bringing that positivity to the table. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. I'm a little bit distracted right now. Yeah, she no, wants that's great. Well, especially <laughs> her, I mean, we get, you know, after hours calls, maintenance and, you know, headaches, things like that. So typically, yeah. most every day we start our day in the negative zone. So we got to get out of that. So when we do make contacts, you know, we're successful at our job. And so wherever our phones are at, there's a mirror in front of the phone. So that reminds everybody to smile. Right. And, and, and so that, that, so that's really important because people can feel the energy. People yeah. can feel that energy on the phone. Absolutely. You can't so fake that either. Yeah. 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 No, totally. I've been trying to get my staff to do is to remember always smile or, you know, 
have a positive thought when you're talking to someone on the phone because they can hear that negativity. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like, um, life happens and we talk to so many people every day that people are having a lot of problems, especially right now with the yeah. shelter in place. Uh, people are just, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, in uh, get, getting uh, cabin fever uh, to, to the point where they, they even, you know, if they make any connection, they want to talk to somebody and sometimes if something's going wrong, they're going to tell you everything about it. So you just have to be prepared about how to be able to process that. Yeah. Understand that it's not always about you. Most of the time, it's not about you at all. It's about the person on the other end and being able to be like, just be compassionate and empathize with them. Um, like Terry said, being, being a great listener. Yeah. 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 Even when your cat is seeking attention. <laughs> yeah. So it's, if, if you guys, like, is there any, any other pieces of information you guys can share that you think would be really, really beneficial to our property managers that are listening, or if we have realtors that are listening, um, kind of like um, rules to live by if they want to be successful with a relationship like this? Uh, as far as property managers, you know, I suggest them go to NARPM and, you know, those meetings and just keep with the industry standards and just get out there and network, you know, network with plumbers, your electricians, you know, your handy people, as well as your staff and maybe, you know, friends of friends, uh, because you never know where a client's going to come from. So you just got to put yourself out there and make as many contacts as you can and it should come twofold back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm sorry, what was the question again, Brittany? I, I was so, I was listening. You're was so, so mesmerized. Yeah. Just, any, any takeaways you want to provide the listeners that will, that will be listening on rules you live by? You mentioned a, f a few already, but if there's any, like, one thing that people can do to hit the ground running with building a relationship with a refer, with a realtor, um, or a property manager, any, anything that you want to want to leave people with. Yeah. To, to, to stay in the curiosity and stay out of judgment. I like that. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and the, re the reason for that is because you end up thinking that nobody needs you and they really do. So you don't ask, there's a book called a more beautiful question. So if you already read that book and you, and you know, it, it, it's the questions that we, ask, that we ask that help get us a better answer. And so if I can ask a better question, then I'll get a better answer. So if you were just to ask yourself of a question, how can I help that person and listen and say, yeah, I can, I can help with that. Right. And become that solution. It goes right back to what you're talking about, Brittany, about give it away for free and people remember, you know, what difference you made for them. So yeah. just stay out of judgment and staying in the curiosity and just ask, ask a better question. Right. Instead of saying, nope, don't know, dig a little deeper. I'll continually dig deeper, continually be, Curious to learn yeah. more. Yeah, I really like that. So yeah, and, and really to be able to understand. So if I were to go to Terry and say, Terry, what are some of your pain points you have in your business right now? And and then when you can deliver on those pain points and go get training around those train those pain points, bring that back, you become a huge value. And I found that with different attorneys. I mean, I have successful attorneys that we that we networked that with that would never think that they would want to go through class on understand how to hire people. And I, and I bring them to a class on how to hire people. And they say, Paul, this is, I've never done anything like this before. I never knew I should go through all these questions. And when you can provide that kind of value, it just, it crystallizes the relationship. Yeah. And I think uh, back to the network, just real quick, you know, with Paul and being with Keller Williams, Keller Williams offers a tremendous amount of classes on everything under the sun, you know, hiring people, uh, and yeah. it, it is really uh, good information. And I am, Paul has shared a lot of those cl classes and seminars with me. And I do think that, you know, there's a takeaway. Yes, it might be geared more towards a real estate, but, you know, there's always that puzzle piece that we fit in there. And, you know, if I can just learn one small thing, it's going to be beneficial for, for everyone. So educate yourself. Yeah. At the end of the day, small businesses in their core have similarities, even if you're outside, you know, one's industry. And so we can all learn from each other. And so if like Paul, you shared, you know, a more beautiful question is a book that seems like changed the way you look at your, the way you, you interact with people and you're sharing that to other people, right? It doesn't matter if they're not in real estate, it works for anyone right. who deals with customers, like even lawyers can use it. <laughs> I love that. Almost Absolutely. like pay it forward type thing too. Yeah. So a couple other great books, uh, one by Gary Keller called The One Thing. 
uh, that would encourage you guys to read. And then another one is the MREA. And the MREA is a millionaire real estate agent. And it's really, it's really the millionaire business owner because the models and systems that are in there will help anybody operate a business at a high level. Cool. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you both for joining us today. We appreciate you. It was so nice meeting you, Paul. Um, thank you, Brandy. Hope thank you guys you. both have a wonderful day. Um, and to all of our listeners, hopefully you, you found this really helpful and you reach out to me or Marie with questions. Um, if you like, are you guys available for questions? If anybody wants to brainstorm ideas with you? Sure. Yes. Put sure. you on the spot. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, just for someone to give me a call, uh, you know, I work, I lead generating a lot of different uh, areas uh, with, with the work with attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys, uh, foreclosures, institutions, uh, you know, uh, different panels that we've been on in training and whatnot. So I'm yeah, more than happy to, to share that in any of those experiences that somebody would have questions around. Cool. Well, thank you both. I know, and, and Terry's a rock star, so <laughs> call her. Yes, she is. I love Terry. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs>